This is a response video to Pirro's uh, response to my video about Ken Wilbur and Richard Feynman. If I can just try and recap where we're up to. What I was saying in the original video was that... Uh, what the hell was I saying? Well, just that, I, I guess what I was saying is that, you know, the universe is this great big old thing, 13.7 billion years old, bloody huge. And here we, uh, what is it, 40,000 years old as humans, something like that, I guess, 100,000, let's say, be generous about it, quite small things. Uh, what right do we have to expect to be able to understand the universe? or to understand our position within it, or to understand consciousness, or, you know, by what right do we buy that? Uh, and the, uh, and what kind of processes, well, how, we, how should we find it, that they're, they're, trying to, they're trying to gain any kind of understanding? And what I was basically saying was, it shouldn't be easy, it should require a lot of hard work, and we should be very modest about what we're actually achieving. So, you know, if you're not doing grad school physics, you probably don't understand that much, and it's certainly not something you could pick up in a couple of weekends with, uh, you know, some of the mystical texts. I think something else is going on with that. I have to make another video about what I think, you know, the power of mystical writing is. But uh, I just think it's different, that's all. Uh, so that's, and that's kind of what I was saying, and particularly in relation to those aspects of the universe which are which, which seem beyond our capacity to understand in any literal way. We might be able to move the symbols about and make predictions based on what, how those manipulations fall out, but that's different to understanding, and I was, I was quoting Feynman on that. But what uh, Pyro, Pyro? Pyro, sorry, uh, what your response was asking, which I thought was a great um, set of questions, was, you know, would, would, would it be possible for us at some point in the future to develop intuitions? which would allow us to, uh, to, to understand in, the, in, the, in Feynman's sense, not just to feel like we understand, but that, that feeling of understanding to actually mean something. You know, when Feynman's saying, if you think you understand quantum physics, you don't understand quantum physics, what he's saying there is that feeling of understanding that we get when we, uh, you know, when we think we know something is often misleading, particularly with something like quantum physics. And, it's a, and, 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 and what he was suggesting, what Feynman was suggesting, was that if you get that feeling from quantum physics, then it's a sure sign that you haven't understood it properly, because it's not supposed to be understandable in that way. Okay, so just to return to Pirro, uh, would it be possible for us at some point in the future to develop that kind of intuitive understanding? Whew, it's a great question, I don't know actually. Um, certainly quantum physics is particularly hard, isn't it? I mean, I, I don't know much about it, just popular writings on it. But it does seem to be queerer than we can suppose, as J.B.S. Haldane suggests. Uh, I don't know, really. I mean, I'm just thinking of other examples, really, of, 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 of moments in which those kinds of... Oops, I've got the other way, there's a dog coming. In which those, those intuitions do seem to have developed. I mean, certainly reading back on the, uh, the history of Darwinism, it does feel as if that people rejected it at the time, or many people rejected it at the time, not just because of theological reasons, which I, know, I imagine was part of it, but because it lacked intuitive uh, sense. You know, people, people couldn't just just couldn't get wrap their heads around it. It was queerer than they could suppose, given their current state of knowledge. Uh, but now, of course, you know, for those of us who've grown up with Darwinism, it's it, 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 you don't even need to think about it. It's just completely embedded in the language, it's embedded in so many conversations, you know, images of it are all over movies and adverts on the television and it's everywhere. So it's, uh, you kind of gain the intuitions about Darwinism through some kind of osmotic process just by being steeped in the culture that we are, I think. Uh, so I do think that's an example there of, uh, you yeah, know, the developing of an intuition. I think, I think Darwinism is a lot easier than quantum mechanics, I have to say. You, know, you can write it down on a, a fag packet, and it's it's pretty easy. I mean, it's not easy, but it's 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 easy to it's relatively easy to understand once you've got it. But I'm not sure that uh, quantum mechanics is, or possibly even ever will be. The other example I've got, which I thought was more relevant in a sense from uh, what you were saying there, Pirro, was to do with 
developments not in the in human consciousness. I haven't seen any evidence of that, or, and certainly not developments in uh, in the physicality of the human brain, for example. There's no again no evidence that that would take place. Anything other than the bloody snail's pace that evolution normally takes place at. Uh, but a kind of development in technological and communications technologies. Uh, so weird to be out here in the country and hear sirens in the distance. Uh, and where I'm thinking of that, with that actually is that you know a few years ago, uh, if you were if you read like critical theory or you read post structuralism or you read people like Roland Barthes or you read Foucault or you read uh, you know, any of those kind of post structuralist theorists, it was really hard going. You know they would talk about intertextuality and they would talk about the free floating signifier and they'd talk about uh, about how meaning is constantly deferred across a web of signifiers. Really, really hard stuff to wrap your head around. Uh, and one of the main reasons was there was no, you know, you, you never got to experience it. It was purely philosophical and purely existed in the realm of ideas. And then, of course, you know, 20 years ago, whatever it was, Tell Nelson and Vince Cerf and all those guys who came up with uh, HTTP and TCIP protocols and all that sort of stuff, just, you know, invented the bloody internet, you know. And now my kids are growing up with the, the hexadecimal blue of a, of a link being absolutely part of the grammar of their thinking. You know, they, they understand that every piece of text is connected to every other piece of text. And, and pieces of text are constantly being cut and pasted as quotations into other pieces. And that, uh, uh, and that all media is kind of readable, and all media is readable by different people, and all, all that kind of stuff that underpins uh, kind of post-structuralist analysis of language and writing is completely embodied in the fabric of technology. I mean, to the point where it's almost boring to say so. It's almost boring to point these things out. It feels like, oh yeah, it's a really tedious thing to say. And it is. And the reason why it's tedious is because it's bloody obvious. And it's, it's part of our intuitions, I think. I can't imagine what the equivalent of that would be in uh, in quantum theory. It'd be brilliant to find out. I mean, maybe it would. You know, Maybe there will be developments in communications and, uh, uh, and information technologies, quantum computing or something, I don't know in which the conversation just circulates around it and becomes more elaborate and forms part of the uh, the language environment that we move through and people are endlessly making references to qubits and to quantum indeterminacy in meaningful ways, not in the ways that people tend to use those things now uh, and, uh, and it becomes recognisable and then I think I guess it would form part of our something like part of our intuitions at that point I don't know. And that's, I suppose we'll be able to do some queer supposing then. We'll be able to suppose the queerness of the universe. The, uh, the quote I like, that I always like to set against the, um, this quotation from J.B.S. Haldane, this one about the universe being queerer than we can suppose, is, is something that's attributed to Einstein. I can't remember the exact quotation, but he said something that paraphrases as... Uh, uh, the queer thing about the universe is that we can understand it. It's just brilliant. The queer thing about the universe is that we can understand it. I don't even really know what it means, but I just really like it. <laughs>